Hello, today we are looking at the materials used in the construction of windows and doors. We're going to break this down into three main materials, probably the most common ones used. The first is timber, we're going to look at aluminium, and we'll also talk a little bit about PVC windows. So when we compare the different material types, there's a few things we're going to break this down into. So one is the looks. And this is probably the biggest driving factor of the windows we decide to use in our housing. The other, of course, will be cost between the different types. Two windows that are the same type but made in different materials may have different pricing on them. We're also going to look at whether the material is high or low maintenance, which means does it need to be recoated or repainted or maintained in some way throughout its lifespan. The next we're going to look at is the R value. Now R value is to do with resistance of heat transfer. It's basically a level of insulation. And what that means is in the colder weather when you warm your house up on the inside, do these materials resist that heat leaching out? And conversely in the hotter months, do they help prevent the heat from getting into the house? And, and it's all about the house maintaining a steady temperature level. Closely related to that is the environmental impact of using that material. Now this is a topic that we're not going to spend an awful lot of time on because that is such a big subject. I'm going to have to devote an entire video just for that at some time in the future, but we'll touch on it very lightly. So first let's start off by looking at our timber windows. All right, here we have a timber window. This is a window that is sitting under the eaves of the house. It's also protected by a uh, patio roof. So it's got quite a good amount of protection. This window has been installed for about seven years. It was oiled once when it was installed and you can see it's still in pretty much perfect condition. So provided the timber work is protected, it will last as, as long as anything. When it comes to insulation value, solid timber is very good at resisting uh, the loss of heat. Having said that, most of your heat loss is going to come from the glass. That glass is going to be 99% of your heat gain and loss. And the other area where heat is lost is through gaps. So you can see, I'm just going to pause and open this window up. So you can see on the bottom edge of this window there is an actual seal and that is uh, a sign of a well-made window is that when it closes it seals properly to prevent draft and heat loss. But the big advantage of timber windows is that they look beautiful. I must admit I'm a a little bit biased when it comes to timber work. I love timber grain. As we can see where timber windows are fixed in, you have the option of disguising fixings like that. And of course the last big, big advantage of timber is that it is truly an environmentally friendly product and the reason I say that is a very long explanation which I will have to cover in another video. So let's have a look at the timber work around this window as you can see it has very minimal protection it's on the northern side of the house so it cops all of the summer and winter sun. If we have a look at the timber it still looks pretty good. At the moment it's, it's looking very nice. It's been in about the same amount of time as that previous window we just looked at, but I have recoded this about probably four times, I think, three or four times I think I've given this a recoat over the years. So the last time I coated it was several months ago, and it's still looking pretty good. But it does have to... Uh, Every, every probably year or two I need to give it another recoat. It looks a bit daggy there but that's not actually rot, that's just the, um, 
just the oil starting to sort of wear out a bit but again I look at something like that and I think it looks nice it's just a little bit out of the ordinary it's not something you see every day that's the kind of work that I like so here's that same window from inside there's that lovely timber work but you'll notice the actual window section is aluminium which is the next thing we'll talk about so aluminium as you can see there if I try and get a view without the sunlight shining at it let's see if I can get a bit of shade on there the aluminium part of the window is not very resistant to heat gain or loss but it is very very durable that's a powder coated finish that's how it went in on the day it was installed and it's never had to be touched up or repainted or anything like that it's uh, a very long lasting product here is a, another aluminium window and one thing I wanted to point out this one's gone into a uh, brick veneer section of house if you have a look at where something is painted we've got some timber cladding up against the eaves and it's been able to be uh, no more gapped and painted and completely sealed completely vermin proof but when you come down to the edge of an aluminium window you can't really sort of no more gap and paint up to the edge of it so we can see here where the the brick's gone in the brick layer hasn't really put it right up to the edge of the window it's not something you can easily kind of seal off uh, but also even even if the bricks were up tight we have um, little gaps in the mortar there so that just comes down to whether you like the look of brickwork um, I'm not a huge fan of it myself I think that looks very sort of 70s that look of brickwork but you can get nice brick I mean it's just a personal choice here you can see the mortar has uh, not really filled up the corner there but again the window is nice and durable solid the other spot you have to make sure is that the sill goes up to the window properly this one is missing its little rubber seal and of course the other advantage of an aluminium window is obviously that uh, aluminium won't burn if there's a fire in the house uh, if it gets hot enough the aluminium might get soft and perhaps buckle but it's not going to become the fuel so if you look at a situation like this where we have brickwork and aluminium windows there's not a lot on the outside of the house that can catch fire all right let's talk about pvc windows or plastic windows now pvc of course stands for polyvinyl chloride the u means unplasticized polyvinyl chloride and unplasticized just means the chemical makeup is such that the plastic is rigid so you're not going to get a flexible bendy plastic like you would get in plastic bags so UPVC just means rigid plastic now unfortunately I've never actually installed any plastic windows myself during my building career so I've had to resort to our Shutterstock account to get some images now I find PVC windows share a lot of characteristics with aluminium windows. They're durable, uh, they're very low maintenance, they don't need repainting or recoating on a regular basis. But there are a couple of differences and one is cost. PVC windows, so I'm told by other builders, are generally cheaper than the equivalent aluminium versions. So cost is probably one of the advantages PVC has. The other advantage is displayed in this example, and I'm talking about R value or its insulation value. When you look at this profile, you can see there's lots and lots of fins in there and lots of air gaps. In fact, there's six air gaps going across that profile. That means it's going to resist the transfer of heat very effectively. Now, of course, I do go back to my previous statement saying most of your heat loss is through the glass. But of course, in this example, this window has been set up with triple glazing. So all of the aluminium windows I've dealt with, they just have the three fins of aluminium, which is not going to be as effective at resisting that flow of heat as uh, 
as an example like this. So this profile with the triple glazing, this has been specifically designed to prevent heat being lost from the house during winter and also to prevent heat creeping in through the windows during the summer months. So I want to talk a little bit further about this idea of resisting heat. There's something called a K value. And a K value is how effective something is, a material is, at transmitting heat. So you can see air has a very low K value. And that's why insulation works the way it does. It's all about creating lots of air pockets which slows down transfer of heat. Timber and PVC are sort of both in the same ballpark. Bearing in mind timber comes in much thicker sections. You could have anything from say 30 to 70 mil thick sections of timber in a uh, window setup. PVC usually only one or two mil thick walls. But aluminium is the one that I wanted to point out. Being a metal product, very effective at transmitting heat through its material. So it's not really a good option if resisting the flow of heat is your main priority. And one other thing with PVC windows, which is information I've gotten from some websites I've looked at, is they advertise it as being fire resistant. Now I find that a bit surprising personally. I've never considered plastic a fire resistant product. But I don't actually have any facts to contradict the claims from the website. So we're just going to have to uh, take their word for it. If you've had any experience with PVC windows, I'd be interested to hear your comments. Another aspect of PVC is that it can be recycled. Um, plastic like aluminium, it can be sent back to a factory to be either chopped up or melted down, reused in further plastic products. Okay, I have rabbited on fairly randomly throughout this video discussing this material, so let's do a very quick summary. I've done a little chart up here with our three uh, material choices for windows. So going through these aspects, the looks, well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I personally would put timber at the top of the looks chart. I think it's a beautiful product, but again, everybody's going to choose something different when it comes to that. For cost, timber generally is a slightly higher cost. I don't believe there's a lot of difference between the cost of aluminium and PVC, but based on what other people have told me, I believe PVC is slightly cheaper. As far as low maintenance goes, PVC aluminium, very low maintenance, very durable. Timber, all depends on how protected the window is. Fully protected, very low maintenance. But if it's exposed to the weather, the maintenance levels goes up. And of course, the R value metals are always going to have a low R value. Timber and PVC look like they've got the edge when it comes to that. I haven't bothered putting down a fire resistance level in this chart because that's a slightly bigger topic to go through. But there is one thing I have touched on during this video that I've not written down in here. And that is environmental concerns. The environmental sustainability and cost of these building materials. Now I'm just going to go right ahead and give you my opinion. I believe timber to be the most environmentally conscious, environmentally friendly building material. But why I say that, it takes an entire video to explain and go through all of the aspects that affect environmental concerns. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. Hopefully sometime in the future I'll get a chance to make one up that just deals with that. All right, I hope uh, this helps you understand a little bit about the materials we use in Windows and the building industry in general. Thank you and good luck.